The word that I have for this week that I wrote in December last year was all about Philippians. So I just want to stand for a moment and look into a few verses from Philippians. So please come with me. <clears throat> Philippians 1, verse 6. Can we go there? Being confident of this, there's some other confidence, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Being confident of this. Guys, we are confident of many things. You see that guy messing up and you are confident. You know what's going to happen to that guy. This is going to happen and that's going to happen and that's going to happen. And I speak that curse. I speak that rubbish over that person because I see that attitude. I see those things happening. And you, yes, you want to protect that person against the rubbish. But you don't speak with an expectation, with the confidence that those guys are going to fall. You know, that political party is just going to be a mess. They're going to just do this. They're going to just do that. You don't know if there's Christians among them that must understand what, how God has called them to be the light, how to be the salt in that place. So be, don't say unless God told you to speak like that. So when you speak, it must be as if God is speaking. I'm not talking about just speaking scripture and prophesying the whole time. That's not what I'm saying. But if you know God's opinion about things, that is when, when you come to know the word of God. When you started to, to know, start to know the word of God, it's not just, I use this as an ATM so that I can know what is his will for me to do. Can I have ice cream or malfa pudding, Lord? Um, it's not just that type of thing. Not at all. When you go and ask God in such a way, it's, a, it's an act of, dependency an act of i want to follow you alone but what would god say about politics what is it that he says about education what is it that he said he's saying about come in conversation with god through the word hello are you with me so that you can be confident with you have the words of god in you that you know that the good work that he started in you he will complete. There's a lot of rubbish that will work in me. There's stress that will work in me, and it will do a certain work. It will not just be there. Satan is faithful. Satan is not lazy. Faithful to his agenda to try and destroy your life. So if you sit with criticism, things are not working out, but you allow the demon of criticism, and you criticize these guys and those guys, and... That demon will do a work in your life and it will destroy. And you will still say it's their fault. So more and more and more and more you will be deceived. But that thing will do a work in you. It can just copy the real. The real is God started to do a work in you. And the work that he started in you, he will complete. When did he start a work? When you gave your life to Christ. That's when the work started became a reality started to become a reality in your life but he started to work for you on the cross and when he said it is finished he was the perfect perfect example the perfect initiative the perfect uh, uh, role model for us of what must happen and when i receive christ god Take me back to look and see, I've been crucified with Christ. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but it's him living in me. Hello? And then I see, there, there on the cross, he thought about me. Like they say, it wasn't the nails that held him on the cross, but it was his love for me and you. And then I see, there God started such an awesome, 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 excellent work for me. For the mess that I've created in my life. For my selfishness. For my own way. Going and, and when I then come to God. I see my eternal hope. When I look at the cross. Amen. And then I receive the awesome good work. That he started there. For me on the cross. And now today. What is this good work? The good work will be. So that it's more of God. Less of me. More of God. Less of me. More of God. Less of me. Like John the Baptist said. But for that, please don't pray that if you're not willing 
for God to answer you. Why? In the answer, it will not be clickety-click, and now you are, there's more of Christ, less of you. Unfortunately, God will many times then use people to expose the flesh that must be dealt with, that you must walk away with. So God will say, not the devil, some guys that irritate you, some guys that you want to slaughter, some guys that you want to this, some guys that frustrate you, and you pray for a new job so that these guys disappear from your life. But meanwhile, they are sent by God. So in the midst, where is Christ? God, I'm in this place, and you want to do a good work in me and through me. Here in this place, here in the school where I work, here at university where I study, here with my business, or where I work for a boss that is just must like feast like with me, whatever that is. Are you still here? Ah, oh, please say something. I'm confident that you began a good work in you, will carry it to completion until, everybody say until, the day of Christ Jesus. Until the day of Christ Jesus. The good work is getting better, getting better, getting better, till the day when I see the fullness of Christ. But how do you know that the good work that God is doing in you, that he is working in you and that you are working with him and that the day is getting better? If tomorrow you see more of Christ in your finances. Not all your finances that worked out, now God has done a good work. No, you know what God is saying in your finances, what God is saying in your relationships, in your weaknesses, in your failures, in your success. The more you can see Christ there, the more you can focus on Christ in that situation, the more you hear his voice in that situation, what's happening? The good work that he started in you is bringing that to completion so that you can see more and more of Christ. That is what his agenda will be. Make sure you're not trying to use him just for your agenda. And that you work for a life that will be better and better and better because all the things are starting to work out. You know, God going to bring his church into so many things where everything, so many things will be shaken in this world. So many nations, so many things will fall. Everything that is shakable will be shaken so that you are protected against it, so that you are just built on the unshakable word of God. That's the only thing that will not be shaken. Make sure, wise virgin, don't be a fool. Don't be a foolish virgin. Make sure that you know the word and that the word is in your heart. Memorize it. Get it in your head. Like they say, you, you speak it even if you don't believe it. You speak it until you believe it. And then you speak it because you believe it. But this is the only option for a wise man, for a wise virgin. And if that word has any impact on you, you don't want to use it as some other witchcrafts, other, other thing that must just have some impact immediately in your life. That's rubbish. If it doesn't work for me, I give it a day, and then what? No. No. This must be the most precious in your life. And you study the word because you choose to love the word. Because you want to know how God, what is his way of thinking. His way of thinking is in your spirit because you have the mind of Christ in your spirit. But your, this mind must understand what his mind is thinking. This mind must know the purposes of God that is in my spirit. And this is the translation this is the articulation of that what is in my spirit so that my mind, my soul can understand it. And if you don't know this, what do you understand? You absolutely understand nothing. So God must help you. God must help me. And God's going to raise up the church. The church going to, and you speak it over the church. The church, God, your church is going to love the word. They're going to get into the word. They're going to stop the, the petty issues about this doctrine and that doctrine. And we're going before the seven years. We're going in the middle of the seven years. We're going uh, after the seven years. As long as you know that you're going. <laughs> let's, let's just start there. And that you have respect for God and that you are faithful whenever you're going to see him. Because maybe you're going to see him before the time. Maybe you're going to see him in one year's time. So forget about that. But 
but put your, yourself as a wise virgin into the place of understanding what is God saying about this. Wise virgin means you don't do it with the oil of the Holy Spirit. Wise builder is you take it with the word. The builder builds on the word. The wise virgin does not do anything without the spirit, the oil. The oil and the word. The Holy Spirit and the Word. Don't do the Word without the Holy Spirit because other demons will do then the Word with you. And that demon of religion will make sure that you use the most powerful, powerful, powerful words on, on, in heaven and on earth to use this Word to destroy and kill many people. Because it was the Word in the hearts of the Pharisee that deceived them enough to try and kill the Son of God. The Pharisee that you create in your life by just reading the word because you're supposed to read the word. Instead of asking, Holy Spirit, I don't want to touch this word if you don't come with me and open it up for me. Because I have such a respect for God's word. I have such a respect for God's opinion. I don't want to touch it and just disappear in it and get frustrated because I don't understand what he's saying. And then without manners, without respect, I just stop and I just walk away. The God was in the middle of a conversation with me. I didn't even know it because I didn't allow the Holy Spirit to tell me that God is speaking to me. But if I have respect in my relationship with him, then I will take the word and I ask the Holy Spirit, come with me into this. And if you understand it or not, you stay there, you stay there, you stay there. Until the Holy Spirit says, it's okay. It's okay. Then you are finished. I don't say get into the Word for two hours and then you call your boss and say, no, I was in the Word of God, I will only be in 10 o'clock. I'm going to fire you, man. <laughs> Holy Spirit will never lead you to be unfaithful. Faithfulness is the fruit of the Spirit. Because where you work, you will do it as if unto the Lord. And the Lord will be on time. Amen. Are you still with me? Oh, please, man. May God help you to, that the work that he is has done in your life that you will do and you won't believe when God is working in your life for some reason when you must read the word oh man you are so tired you so easily this when the pastor is preaching then you're on your phone and you're not unless you're taking notes just understand that some other demon next to you is taking your finger into the phone <laughs> just see that picture you got it let me just see you with your phone. <laughs> now, what am I saying? You won't believe it when you're supposed to focus with the Holy Spirit in the, into the Word. There will be ten voices screaming at you to take your focus away. As long as you don't sit with respect and a teachable spirit and receive what God has for you. As long as you don't come to love the Word. As long as you don't uh, uh, get into action with a focus into the Word of God. As long as you don't do that then at least you've learned in this hour being here how to not respect of word, the word of God in the week. And you walk out here and the, the enemy is so excited you were here at the church. I mean, you are the church. That we were not together, that you were here. Because, wow, another hour of just wara wara when you heard the word. Of just finding other things to do while the word is being preached. Wow, so that you can go out there and you have hundred times more excuses why you don't really get out into the Word, why you don't really focus in the Word when you need to face a hundred things. Here you don't need to face a hundred things. You just have to face me. You know, whatever. But what am I saying? Come on, guys. Let's, let's learn a lifestyle of Respect for him and his word. Let his word be so precious to us. So precious to us. So precious to us. And the work that he started in me, he will complete it when I respect his word. Because then I work with God, with his word. Amen. But I receive the word of rejection. I receive the word of all this other rubbish in my life. And I just compromise and I can justify my compromise. And I just carry on with the program. That thing will grow. That thing will not stagnate. If you have allowed bitterness, if you have that crap in your heart that that thing in your heart with that person you're just irritated with that person you leave it there leave it there that thing's gonna get a voice 
And that voice will translate into unforgiveness, into a heart that becomes hard, into bitterness, into judgment, into, into criticism, into a thing of, I put that guy professionally there in my relationship. That thing will do a great work in your life in the name of hell. No, 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 no. Hell is going to be manifested on earth before the coming of Christ. The, the, the depth of darkness will be revealed so that in the light, the beauty of God will shine forth. Amen. But before that, may God help us to understand how to position ourselves. Amen. That's the first one. The second scripture in Philippians 1, verse 21. Life, for to me, life is Christ and die is gain. Okay, so tonight, when you speak to your wife, your husband, somebody, somebody you speak and you say, um, how was your day? Oh, today life was Christ. You say, what? <laughs> uh, you sound a little bit super spiritual. Okay, now how was your life Christ? This morning I just sat with him. I just sat us there and I just said, God, awesome, the freshness. Bring, bring this freshness in my life, please, Lord. Thank you for the privilege that I can just be here. I can do that I have the privilege of this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And you just sit with the Lord or just read some of the word. And you got in the car. Okay, when you got dressed... Uh, don't think of all the stress and, and meditate on all the challenges of today. And you feel drained even before you get into the car. No. How can I stand in that place? You feel stressed. You say, God, I lay this down at the cross in Jesus' name. I take your peace beyond all understanding. Because I will not worry. I will not be anxious of anything. I will lay down in prayer. You said I must lay down in prayer uh, with Prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. I thank you for today. I thank you for this meeting. I thank you for that guy that I want to slaughter. I thank you for, thank you for whatever in this day. With thanksgiving, you walk into the place. Because if you do it with thanksgiving, the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. And you will have the guidance of God beyond your understanding. You go into the meeting beyond your own understanding of what must happen in the meeting. You go with the peace of God. And the peace of God will guide you in the meeting. Okay. And before, I, I challenge you. One of... A thousand creative ways that you can find. Maybe before you enter that room, maybe before you enter that room where you're going to have the meeting, just stand back and say, God, will you please enter first? When you get at your workplace, enter first, please, Lord. You stand back and just do it once or twice. Don't make a scene, you know, that people think you are freaky. You know, just stand back and, Lord, please come first, enter, and then you follow. Just to get your mind into the thinking of, okay, God, it's going to be you and I'm following you into this meeting. I'm here because you want me to be here. Because you've called me to this place. I don't know what the heck I'm going to say. I don't know how to handle this situation. Or if you think you know exactly how to handle, how you're going to fuss fat those guys. But maybe it's not that you're supposed to fuss fight, but you don't want to hear what God wants to say because you're going to hear, forgive, have grace, love them, believe in them, and you don't want to hear that. So you believe the fire of God and the discipline. Uh-uh, don't play the game. Okay? Stand aside, God, come in, please. That what you want to say, let that be so. You know, we did prophetic counseling. I did it. A lot of you guys know that story. And he was this pastor and his wife. Man, he's a pastor, he's a farmer, and he's a Dutchman. That's a combination. Ooh. <laughs> so this guy, he had this personality, you know? I was sitting there, I don't know him. How do you say in English? From a bar of soap. What a pathetic statement. Saying, from a bar of soap. And we were. He, they were sitting there, and he had this one question. I have three pastors in my church. I want to fire them all. I'm going to fire them because they're all lazy. He said another Dutch word, but in any case. And I'm going to fire them. And I've written there prophetically some stuff, and I saw, whoa, man, how am I going to say this to this guy? And I've written two scriptures, and the one scripture was Eli and his sons. 
And the problem was Eli didn't disciple his sons. Eli honored his sons more than he, what he honored God. How are you going to say this to this interesting, very <clears throat> pastor, farmer, Dutchman? So I said, I said um, can I be honest? He said, Prat! <laughs> Something like that, but just with a deeper voice. I said, um, you are the problem. I said, the scripture is Eli and his sons. And Eli uh, said what was wrong, but he didn't walk with them out of the wrong. He didn't disciple them out of the wrong. Didn't keep them accountable. And in the end, they died in the battle and Eli was gone. He said, what? He looked at his wife. The wife looked like a cat that got milk. <laughs> man, oh man. <laughs> What am I saying? My brother, my sister, many times, God wants to use you, but to cut it straight. First of all, into your own life. Into your own life. So that what? There's more of God, less of you. Why? Because God wants to do a good, good work. Why? Because your life must be Christ. In Christ is the life. You had a life today? Life equals Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the bread of Life is the resurrection and the okay. So if you want that life and you say my life is Christ, then allow him, allow the life of God to be in you, because then you hear the voice. The voice of God is fresh in that meeting, and you want to say this, and just the next moment you hear God saying no. The guys that were very angry in the army because a lot of guys gave their lives to Christ. And this one guy said, um, they want you there at the chef bungalow there in the army. You must come. But they want to beat you up. And those days I, I was just, I don't know if I was stupid with faith or whatever. I said, no, I'm going. And uh, I was there. And when I get, got in the, uh, the bungalow, the one guy took me like this and he put me down. And I, I remember one thing I said. And I said, God, you can see he's very big. <laughs> And he put me like down. Now, if he put me down and I'm this size, I mean, this size. It wasn't this size. <laughs> but, uh, so what am I saying? And they, they started to this and started to that and, and uh, mocking and this and in my face and the F word and that and that and that. And, that. and uh, at one stage I said something. And then that guy wanted to meet me and I said oh Lord and I just felt God said and I just felt God said I didn't tell you to say anything so I kept quiet and then at one stage they started to swear and curse Jesus and I just felt a release at one stage I said you know you're the biggest lot of fools I've ever seen in my life if you die now you're gonna all burn in hell I don't say that to people like that. But they were so, God helped me to, to, to block out the things that they said. And uh, they were like, you know, you're the Christian, you're supposed to be nice. You know, you're going to burn in hell. You're the biggest lot of fools that I've ever seen. You know why? Because don't, God don't want you in hell. He loves you. He wants you in heaven with him forever. But you decide how you response that you want to go and burn in hell and there was <laughs> suddenly poof, silence and then I felt the presence and I said but you know for God you are so precious you are so precious you are so precious he has such a plan for you and he gave everything for all this rubbish even what you said he died on that cross and suddenly there was just this openness and I sat there for another hour and a half and this guy that wanted to F me and I don't know what else and what else. He was asking the questions. This happened till 1 o'clock the morning, 4 o'clock the morning. All, uh, you're up and you are, some of you older guys know. Then you're on inspection at your bed. That evening they called me again. I said, I'm too tired. I cannot. 
some other guy said, you don't know what's going to happen. We will clean this. We will help you with your bed. We will, for the inspection and everything. Please just go. Went there. <laughs> the guy that grabbed me, he said, I have a room there. There's a lot of us that we want to receive Christ. Um, uh, you must go and sit there. My nickname was Domini there in the army. Domini, you're going to sit there. I'm going to take them in one by one. And then at the end, I will also come. Uh, we want to give our lives to Christ. <laughs> they all just gave their lives to Christ. But where did it happen? My brother, my sister, when life wants to take you like this and put you down. And life is trying to curse you, to swear at you, your boss, your whoever. It could be the greatest opportunity. And that day I've learned something. I've learned something. And that many times when people would be in my face and curse me or this, especially in the army at that, at that stage, I would just say, yes, God so really loves you. And when you respond with that as if they told you the biggest special thing, <laughs> <laughs> Come with the opposite spirit. Look at me, give a swear word and walk away. The one guy came to me and he was swearing and he was this and he was this and he was angry about God and Jesus and that. And I said, God is speaking to you. He loves you. He's this. And the next moment in that, the tears started to fall. You don't know why people can be like that. Many times people send the biggest knoll to you. You know, the biggest hora. To you but it's and he does not know how to react he doesn't know but he was pushed by the holy spirit pushed by a prayer of some people some people someone that prayed for that person that that prayer pushed that person to to you to come to you and then you respond to what you see instead of respond to what god sees and what god wants oh man may god help you so that at the end of the day he saw so much of Christ and your interaction with Christ where he said yes, where he said no, where he said keep quiet, where he said speak, where he said um, I will be there, where he just said be at peace and you heard nothing further but there was just peace in the meeting. Or where this challenge happened, you walked out there and you messed up. You messed up. You lost your torrent. What's your, what's your, your, your temper. You lost your temper. And you said something, and you feel ashamed. But when you walked out there, just before you walked out there, you said, Guys, before we go, I just want to say the following. I just want to say the following. Um, sorry for how I reacted. And the other guy that's an atheist wanted to go out there and said, I just got another 10 reasons why I will not follow these fake, fake, fake Christians. That's how he wanted to walk out there. And suddenly there's this guy. And, and, and all the reasons gone because suddenly this Christian say, I'm so very sorry that I, was, that I said this and that I treated you in this way. And that atheist go out there and said, I, I have not met a guy that then at the end of such a thing would do that and humble himself and say, I'm in the wrong. So life today was Christ. It's not because you were perfect in the day, but because you were always interacting with God interacting with God, even with five, six, seven, eight mistakes that you did made in that day. So that in the end, you could say, Christ was so involved in this day. I can say, not like, today was bad. The bad today was horrific because you interacted with horrific things that you declared it's horrific, that you declared it was negative, you declared it was two people say something wrong to you. And now your whole day is bad. Where did you get that? Happened to one or two of you? Somebody was muslick with you, just told you, shut up and go and do that. And you still wanted to, you know, only Peter Jones will do that. And then you walk, and now you have a bad day for the rest of the day because of those three words. How's that possible? If you're a man of God, if you're a child of God, that's the three words. And how many words, how many sentences did God say to you in that day? But sorry, God, that 30 sentences from your word and whatever you're going to say to me during that, it will not have the final say. It will not have an impact in my life today. But that man. Today, my life was Peter's mistake. My life was not Christ. 
What a pathetic day you had. Yes, pathetic day because of your choices, pathetic day because of your way of living, because of the day of your immaturity. I know he's not one of you guys, but I'm just saying principle. Um, do you understand? Today, life is Christ. Die is gain. Die is gain. Today, you must just die. Then you have gain. No, no, no. no. It's not just talking about that death cannot swallow you. Christ, death was swallowed up by what Christ did on the cross. Death will swallow up the one that is not serving Christ into eternal death. But death will not swallow up you. You will not swallow up by death. But death will work for you. Tomorrow the death of your flesh, the death of your fear, the death of your anxiety, the death of your lust, the death of your compromise, the death of your ridiculous religious opinions that you're not open for many Christians because you're in some other pathetic religious system. Not one of you. That thing, the death of that, that is great gain. That's gain. That's gain. So the death of my flesh brings more of Christ. So that's a prophet. Death is prophet if it works for me. Amen. That's the second one of Philippians 1. Philippians 2. Philippians 2. Go for it. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ, Jesus. Next. Okay. Who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but, by ma but made himself nothing. Made himself, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, in human likeness. Many times when you have success, many times when you know a lot, it's like you give yourself a different pedestal. I've seen many times, you get these religious guys, not one of you, but... <laughs> Sometimes when you would share a word, you see that manifestation in the way that they, or, I don't know if you've seen that before. And they are just somewhere, but you can say, oh, Lord. <laughs> Anybody seen that before? One or two. Okay. You will just find that. They will not look at you. Because there's some spirit rising. They must just tell, oh, what spirit is rising here? Let it go in Jesus' name. Many times when you hear the word, that's when demons want to manifest. So many times when you hear the word, what comes up in you? What irritation? What frustration? What faults? What this? What this? What justification? Well, I've heard this before. Or that, or that. Yes, but that. See what's coming up in you and just tell the thing to move it. Because he was locked up. In the week in that room and suddenly when you hear the word he opens up the door he comes through the passage he's come and sit in the living room and he has something to say to you just tell him go front door or back door in jesus name that's how the word will set you free the truth will set you free not just when somebody pray for you for that spirit of arrogance Han and jesus now not just then but many times when just hearing the word and if you have interaction with the word, you can be set free from the demonic. The truth can set you free. This is the most, 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 most powerful. The only power in a prayer is how many words, how much word is in the prayer. By faith. But the faith must come from the word. Amen. So. You must have a certain attitude to be a servant. A servant. There's a curse of a servant. A servant that's in a curse. And that is what? The guy that is just myth about everything. Jesus didn't tell the servant, we will abolish slavery. Now, slavery, in a lot of ways, was under the yoke of the, of the satanic, of the demonic, because it was from a place of selfishness. But the concept of slave, you are a slave sitting here. You are either a servant unto the Lord or you are a servant to your flesh. You are a servant to your fear. You are a servant to your selfishness. You are a servant to your religion. You are a servant to your, your haha attitude in religion. The most pathetic attitudes you get, sometimes get with religious people. You won't believe it. Many times with the religious people. Oh, that's why I say it's so dangerous. So dangerous when you take the word without the spirit. 
So dangerous. So dangerous. May God help you with that, please. God need us. Uh, no, that sounds wrong. <laughs> we need God. <laughs> we need God for those who listen. Okay. Are you still here? Then he says, next scripture, next verse. For it is God who works in you to will and to do act according and to act according to his good purpose. So what are we talking about? So I am lazy. I don't want to do this. And if God does not work in me the will to do it, then I will not do it. That's not what he says. He first is saying, you position yourself as a servant. A servant means there's a master. The definition of a servant is, I submit, surrender my life to the will, the idea, the strategy, the opinion, the work of somebody that I will call master. You will be a servant slave. The question is, of who? Will it be Christ, the Father, or the Holy Spirit, or will it be yourself, your flesh, your bitterness, your pathetic self-justification? That's now me and you. That must grow up. That must grow up. Okay? Was it D.L. Moody that said, if you have just the word, you will dry up. If you just have the spirit, you will blow up. If you have the word and the spirit, you will grow up. Um, I th okay, sorry. I thought it was a good one. Okay. Now in all of this, when you are a servant, you must know as a servant, he will not leave you that you must just perform as a servant. He will work in you so that you can do the work with him. It's not just for him. You find people, you've heard that saying, I'm not working for God, I'm working with God. You, some of you guys have heard that. That's wrong. That's not theologically correct. Why? Because as a priest, you do it for him. The Bible says, whatever you do it, do it unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. As a priest, ministering in his presence, ministering unto the Lord. What I do, I do for Jesus' name's sake. But then also, as a king with authority, I do it with him. In God's name, in Jesus' name, I speak to the storm. So work with him, but do everything also for him. Not for your change. Not for the circumstances to change. Not for your financial breakthrough. If you believe that's God's strategy for your financial breakthrough, make sure then, especially then, that you do what you do with him. With him. Amen. Okay, we go to Philippians 3. Don't worry, there's only four chapters. Okay, but whatever was to my prophet, I now consider lost for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness, we sang about that, of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all thing, things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. Everybody say rubbish. rubbish. What is rubbish? Paul is calling a lot of things that was precious, suddenly calls it rubbish. Doesn't mean it, that you must throw it away. This, oh, what is precious to me, the house that I got, the, the car that I have, the clothes, the relationship, uh, it was all precious to me. Now I must call it rubbish. So I'm going to divorce my wife and I'm going to throw away my car and I'm going to give my house away. That's not what it says. It's first of all talking about the attitude. My heart was too much in the house, in the money, in the success, in the success of my business, in my opinion, my opinion, my hurt, and how I'm right, and they are all wrong. And all. My heart is in that. Take your heart away from it. Consider it loss. Consider it not as so important that you are making it. But decide what is the most important is knowing Christ. And not, that is not, once again, sitting the whole day, praying and reading Bible, and that's all. It's about in every situation, you do it with Christ and for Christ. 
You get God's word in the situation. When you're driving to your job, pray in tongues. You go to your job with a certain agenda, you stop, got out, get out of the car, and suddenly you have a different agenda. Because God tuned you. He brought you in line with his perfect will. Brought you in line with his perfect will. It happened to me quite a few times. When I wanted to do something, and I started to pray in tongues, I went there, I was just driving, I mean, there's nothing else. I was just dry, uh, praying in tongues while driving, and when I got out there, there was just clarity. And it was in a different direction. Then I stood ashamed, not ashamed, I was shocked at how easily we could think something is God, but is actually not God. Pray in tongues, and you'll be shocked at how many ideas that you have. It's good ideas, but it wasn't God idea. Please, please, please. When you watch the news, no, I'm watching the news. My life is Christ. I'm watching the news. Yeah. And while I'm watching the news, I curse with the demons from hell in unity with hell. I curse these guys. Yeah. Look at the polit political guys. They're only like this and this. Yeah. That guy, they do that. Yeah. You know, they must just, how can people do that? What? You know, my opa, the Bura in the old days, hey man, they could fight with the people when they reading the news and especially the, the weather. And, uh, but while you are sitting there, why can you not intercede when you hear how this is happening and you're getting angry at the Russians or you're getting angry at the, the guys that are driving like maniacs or you, or you getting angry at that political party that is talking a lot of rubbish and misleading the people and, and lying. And then you pray, God, you have a plan for each one of them while you're watching the news. My life is Christ even when I listen to the news. Because me and God interacted about me and God sitting here and watching the news. And you won't believe it. Sometimes when you watch something, you interact with the person that you are watching it with. Not true. So please, man. Please, man. Do it in that way. Sometimes you must go and watch the news so that you say, God, I'm, I'm willing to pray for, for some stuff. Help me. And then you ask, and you say, oh, the dollar is down, that this is up. God, that, thank you that you will provide for your church, and that people will not find their security in finances, shake the heavens and the earth, have mercy on us. But God, show us how to use money as a servant, and that money will not corrupt the church. And you're praying about that. Now it's sport. And this guy, God, that the guys will not... not Make idols just out of the sport that people will not find security in sport because they are great, they have some talent. Now, speak to God about it. Not just God, who do you think is going to win this game? No. I hope you catch that. Are you with me? Life is Christ. So that next script, next one. I press on. Everybody say press. Toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward ward in Christ Jesus. I press on. Press on for a big, big uh, reward. What is that big reward? You press on means you put in some effort. Guys, how are you putting in some effort? Or are you just flowing like a dead fish during the day? The, the fish that's alive go upstream. The fish that is dead just go with the flow and go and rot and die 10 kilometers further. Please, press, press, press on. Press on. Everybody say press on. That means it's not going to just be easy, man. It's not just always going to be easy. You need to press on to stay humble. Press on to walk in with patience. Press on to be faithful. Press on to get into the word. Press on because the enemy is there. He needs to get you out of that rubbish, but we will not honor him in Jesus' name. Press on. So that what? The price for which God has called me. God has called me with a price. What? The biggest price, the guy that was faithful with the two, four talents. Five talents became ten. I will give you authority over ten cities, and then the reward, enter the joy that your master enjoys. Biggest reward, that you can enjoy life how God wants you to enjoy life, that your joy and your father's joy is the same joy. That is a major, major, major reward for somebody that is called for a progressive intimacy, intimate worship lifestyle. For a guy with such a lifestyle. You know, if you get a crown, 
the crown. The biggest awesome crowns are for the 24 elders before the throne. And you know what they look do with the crowns? They one by one they sit and say, "Look at my crown," and then everybody clap hands. <laughs> we bow down, we lay our crowns at your feet, and God, whatever you have done in my life, whatever is beautiful, what I find in this crown, the depicting the beauty of what you have done in my life, all that beauty is only because of you. It's just to lay down in worship that the beauty of what you've done in my life on earth is only because of you. And that is this amazing reward that you have. That you can put it down and say, this beauty is because of you. Amen. We're going for the last one. Everybody say, four by four. You know that one long ago, hey? Philippians 4 verse 4 is your 4 by 4. When he's going rough, everybody say, Rrr. All right, try that again. Rrr. Okay. So when he's going rough, you, you, you don't start to do this. You start to rrr here. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. So if your life is in Christ, it's not in circumstance. For up and down, up and down, up and down. So if God started to do a good work in you, he's going to fulfill it. You can rejoice in him, even though some other stuff is not fulfilled. So that something is precious, and it's gone, and it's precious, it's God, and your life's up and down. No, no, no. That what is, is the price in your life is knowing Christ, and that will not, it will not disappear. That's why. It doesn't matter your circumstance. You will rejoice in the Lord. And he repeats that because it's very important. Because the joy of the Lord will be your strength your strength so rejoice in the lord and again i say rejoice you sleep yeah i say stop sleeping and again i say stop sleeping <laughs> why do i say it again because i'm very 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 serious that you must stop the sleeping you know do you understand that next time you sleep i'm gonna call you out and say adam where are you <laughs> you know i'm cloud nine you know you know that one, just for the sake of time, because I know you have nothing to do this afternoon. You know? So this Germany, he had a one old, I mean, he wanted to sleep in church. Are you guys okay if I tell a holy joke? And, uh, and every time he starts to sleep, he starts to snore. <laughs> and then nobody can focus in church. But he cannot tell that, well, we, uh, you cannot come to church. Because his heart is genuine, he wants to come to church. What do you do? So he said, everybody going to heaven, stay seated. Everybody that's going to burn in hell, stand! <laughs> the old woman stand. Germany, I don't know why I'm standing, but I think me and you are standing for the same thing, hey? <laughs> now, I'm going to catch you. You sleep again, yeah. Oh, man. Next one. Verse 6, don't be anxious about anything. Once again, guys, when you find everything in Christ, anxiety is not, oh God, here's my, not, my heart. I'm going for counseling out of this anxiety. I have this anxiety and, and people pray for me. But in the process, I'm not laying it down. I'm confessing anxiety. Confess the stress. Confess the fear. Anxiety is not from God, so confess it. Don't feel condemned if you are struggling with anxiety, please. But separate yourself from that to say, that is not my friend. Anxiety is my enemy. It's not my friend. You with me? That's in the confessing. But how will you get rid of that? By prayer. Be anxious about anything. But here's the answer how to get rid of it. In everything, in the good, in the bad, in the ugly, in the beautiful, in the whatever, by prayer and petition. Prayer, I lay it down before you. Petition is, I put it out there, Lord, by faith. I put down that petition with thanksgiving. Everybody say thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the bridge to go over troubled water to verse 7. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds. Okay. Are you with me? 
You cannot go and you don't think you will. Don't fight anxiety if you don't understand God's strategy through prayer and you don't just put it down before the Lord because you focus on it. No, no. Prayer, petition, this is what I stand for. This is what I believe your word says, God. And I thank you, God. If it changed now, if it doesn't change now, I thank you. You've heard my prayer and you have the best for me. I thank you for who you are in my life. That's it. And in that place, the peace of God will be a miracle that will just come over you and protect your heart and your mind from stupid, stupid decisions that we can make. Okay, the next one, last one. I can do everything through him who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, and we can use that verse very much, very much in many circumstances. But once again, in the same context as a lot of the previous scriptures, is about what? He says, in circumstances, I had a lot, I had nothing. I had struggles, I had peace. I had breakthroughs, I had no breakthroughs. You know, when you don't have a breakthrough and people are nasty with you, what can come out of you is the poison from the snake. When you, when you criticize people, you criticize the organization, you criticize these guys, you criticize that guy, and the snake is so proud of you, but spitting all the vomit. Or, or, you can be in that place and say, even though I went through this and I went through that, but I've learned how to be content. When it's up and down, and some of you guys and most of us many times, somewhere in our lives, there's up, there's down, there's up, there's down, there's a shame for, for the decisions, there's a, there's a surrender to God and, and a, astonished by His grace and His love for me. It's, it's many times that type of thing happens. But through all of it, I've learned one thing. To be content, to be content. And that is not to just be fed up or just give up, but it's to give it over unto the Lord. Because God, you are, in, you are in control. And in that I'm content, I'm satisfied because I have you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Bottom line, I shall not be in need. And then this scripture is connected with that. I've learned contentment in all the stuff, in all the trauma that I've experienced, all the hurt, all the disappointments. I trusted you for this. I trusted you for that. I trusted for you for that. And nothing happens. I don't understand it, Lord. If you understand or not, in your situation, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You, uh, that, that is by doing what? I can do all things. I can keep my mind sane. I can keep my heart with God and don't get it, let it frot and rot in a lot of rubbish. Um, I, can do, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When I have lack, when I have prosperity, when I have breakthroughs, when I have no breakthroughs, when I have hurting situations, when I have disappointments, when people hurt me, when people support me. Whatever. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Father, come and work in our hearts, please, Lord. I pray for your hand on every man, woman in this place. God, forgive us where there can be shame for how we just threw tantrums in situations where people would hurt or people would disappoint. But God, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us by forgiving them, by giving them grace, by supporting them, by praying for them. And to look at our own lives and say, but for the grace of God, there goes I. And I can make hundred times more mistakes than that person, what he did. I have no pride to stand upon except boasting in the cross. Forgive us, Lord, for many times arrogance, even in prayer, in how we see our brothers and sisters. Oh, set us free, Lord, please, so that life can be Christ and die can be gain. The God, God, the good work that you've started in every man and every woman in this place. We pray that you will complete it. And any other spirit that is working, we, we walk away from that thing. That will not do a complete work in us. Bitterness will not do a complete work. Rejection will not. Comparison will not. Religion will not do a, a complete work in us. No, we walk away from that right now in the name of Jesus, through the blood of Christ. Set us free with your truth, Lord, so that we can don't have to walk out with that rubbish. In Jesus' name, set us free, Father. We choose to rejoice in you. Forgive us for murmuring. Forgive us for entertaining and flirting with negative opinions, even about people. Forgive us for cursing people, even in, in different spheres of life, Lord. 
You have called us to be a blessing. Help us then that our words will be the words of God. That we will learn. We will understand and come to know your word. That we will love your word. We will fall in love with your word. We will have relationship with your word. So that your word can dwell in us richly. Help us for such a lifestyle, God. We need you for that. We thank you that you come and do that in a special way for each man and every woman in this place. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. As all say, amen. Let it be so.